All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about this little guy right here. That's called a Japanese beetle. There, I think there's like two or three different species that I know of. They are the insect that is responsible for making those white grubs in your lawn that eat the roots of your lawn and all that stuff. That is this bug. And it, it reproduces by the millions, literally millions. And you can see they're attacking my grapevines. That's what they do. That's the damage. They basically turn the whole leaf into a skeleton and then the leaf dies and they move on to the next tree. What they do is they mount themselves on a leaf like this. So what they do is they mount themselves on a leaf like this and you see his legs are raised. And basically what he's doing is he's putting on a scent hormone for the mate, for his mate or her mate. Well, I don't know if that's a male or female. And basically when they do that, they will come in and literally strip your entire bush down where they do this. Now, there's really no cure for this problem. The only thing you can do that I find that works, I've done all the... Uh, what do you call those traps? The uh, Japanese beetle traps. You set them up. Those bags would fill up left and right. It wouldn't. It doesn't solve the problem. What you have to do is what I'm going to show you right now. Okay. And you have to remove these ones that create this hormone or this pheromone. And by doing this, you will. They will stop coming here eventually. Now, you have to do this every day. This might take actually a while for you to do, but the damage will be a lot less if you do this than if you don't do anything. If you don't do anything, you're going to have a problem. If you buy those beetle traps, they will pull in the beetles from miles away. They'll come in from miles. There's literally, when I say there's millions, I mean there's literally millions of these things. They're, they are definitely an invasive species. Uh, this will fall into the invasive species playlist. But this particular insect is a very, very hard one to deal with. They're very resistant. They don't die easy. They're, they cling on. So anyway, what I do is I basically, I create a, I take one of my famous cups like this. I stick a funnel in the top and let's see if I could do this on camera without losing them. You can get 100% success rate catching these things if you do it the way I do it, okay? What they do is they do what I call a suicide roll. And you see how he just rolled off into the cup? They do a suicide roll. That's their way of escaping danger. Some of them fly away, and some of them are clingers. They cling to the leaf. They don't want to come off. Most of them do the suicide roll. And basically, let's see if I can get this right here. Where are you? Okay, there's one here. You can see my cup is below. And basically, if you hit them, see this is a clinger. This one doesn't want to come off. And I only got one hand, so I can't pick them off. And if you do it, you can see that they're, they're hiding in between the leaves like over there. And you can see there's like, there's one underneath the leaf there. You got to walk around and pick these off. But if you, if I didn't pick these things off my grapevines, they keep coming back every now and again, but if I didn't do that at all, this grapevine would be stripped down to the bone like that. They would be nothing but, but that left. That's it. So what I do is I go around every day at the end of the day. It's better to do this system when you're catching them in the evening when it cools down. If it's light and warm out, they, they'll fly away. You'll get like maybe a 10%, 20% catch rate. But if you wait to the evening when it gets cold, it's easy as pie. It's like taking candy from a baby, basically. They'll just fall right in your cup and you can catch them and get rid of them. But I'm not going to do a whole bunch of them. I just want to show you what I do to deal with Japanese beetles. You have to do something. If you don't do what I'm doing, this tree would be stripped to the bone. And this is, this is still getting bites and, and some leaves are getting eaten up, even with me coming out here every day and catching hundreds. Now, you can see I have a slurry in here of these Japanese beetles. That smell is so horrible. 
it smells worse than rotting flesh. You ever smell like a, a deer gets hit on the side of the road and it stinks and you pass it and it's just disgusting smell? This smells worse than that. This is absolutely the most disgusting smell you can possibly imagine. It will make you vomit. If I was to open that lid right now, I would probably gag on camera. It's that bad. It's absolutely disgusting. The other good thing about leaving the slurry like this, as you can see, it's like a bug juice, is that it, it tracks a lot of flies, mosquitoes, and everything else. And it just, this whole container will start filling up with flies and all kinds of insects. So you just leave that funnel on there, get a little slurry going, and pick your, use it to pick all your, your Japanese beetles. You start filling up. And at the end of the day, you sit it somewhere in your garden, or well, not too close to your, because it does attract a lot of insects. Not, you don't want it right next to your, your vegetables, but nearby. And it'll pull all the insects, the flying insects, out of your garden. They are attracted to that rotting smell. And you'll catch a lot of bugs that way. You'll get the flies out of there. I think mosquitoes, everything. But I want to show you how bad they are in my area. This one tree, I'm going to try to focus in on this if I can. Or you're right there somewhere. Right there. All right, you see this tree right here? You only see the top of it. Let's see if I can get you. Okay, you see that tree? You see how it's starting to turn brown? Those leaves have all been getting stripped off. This tree is their breeding ground. This is like the ground zero for these insects. Am I in, are you in frame? Yeah, I believe you are. Right there. That's like the ground zero for these Japanese beetles. They will strip that tree down to the bone till there's nothing left. So what I do is I try to keep them off my property let them go on that tree, I don't care. But eventually when that tree gets stripped to the bone, they come in onto my property and start stripping my trees down. So I try to keep it in check by me doing something about it, but if I didn't do anything about it, I wouldn't be able to have a garden here. That's how bad the, the Japanese beetles get here. All right, so if you have a Japanese beetle problem, get yourself one of these little cups, you know, buy yourself an iced tea or something, and then just put the cup underneath the uh, bug and you see how he dropped boom right in there very easy you can do this all day it's actually fun after a while but I've filled up cups of these by the end of the year I'll probably fill up two or three of these cups full of insects and bugs and stink bugs and everything else and it just rots and ferments and it catches even more bugs and flies it keeps the flies out of here it gets the gnats and everything so yeah if you want to give this a try that's what I do you know, once they get in there, they can't really get out, guys. Believe me when I tell you, they, they, they won't get out. Even the flies can't really get out. And you can see they're crawling around the top. They want to get in there. You could take that You could take that funnel off, too. They'll get in there, the flies. And then they don't get back out. They get stuck in there. And this whole thing will fill. I've, like I say, this smell is absolutely disgusting, though. So, all right. So, if you've got a problem with Japanese beetles, like that one that's eating up my, my trees here now, you got a problem with them this is one way to deal with it all right so don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one take care